fact, we would get to the beach, I wouldn't even go in the water. I'd just go straight over to the tide pools and crouch down and sort of peer through this window into this incredible world that I had never seen before. And that first dive that I took uh, after, uh, after that course, I saw all my tide pool friends again, only underwater. And I got to you know, really see them eating and, and, and moving and, and I see their lives basically underwater. Yes. There's so always particulate matter in the water because we have really rich nutrient water out here and it supports all of this life. I mean, if you look at this, this is a, a, a piece of reef and there's nowhere on this, in this photo that you can even stick your pinky down without smashing something. So it's this, you know, abundance congregation of, of, of life. Um, I've been doing photography for 30 years. I've been a studio photographer for 30 years. And so I bring that experience and, and all my chops, I guess you could say, down to the underwater world. And so I feel like these fish come in for a portrait. It's like, okay, I'm ready. Here I am, you know, take a picture of me. And so they come into my studio, my underwater studio, um, to, uh, to show themselves, you know, to, to be more than just a fish on a plate. To have, <laughs> it's true, to have some character and some personality. If you, if you look closely at some of these shots, I try to bring out that personality in something that you might think doesn't have a personality. Now, these guys are sort of like puppies with fins, but they can also go 30 miles an hour. So if you can imagine that, you know, and they're coming like this at you, around under your legs and biting at your helmet and your strobes and all that kind of stuff. So all this is going on in front of you. It's just like this display of like Cirque du Soleil on steroids. You know, it's just like, wow. You know, I don't want to forget your weight belt or you're never going to get down. You're just going to float there. It's like, and many times, you know, you get, all, you, you get all geared up and you forget something. You forget your fins and you jump in the water and you're like sort of this. And everybody's like Dave is probably going, forget your fins, huh? You know? so and this, so I, I was out one time and there was one of these sea hares on the kelp and it fell off or got brushed off or something. And so it started to float down in the water column. And what I realized was it's such a different angle. You always see sea hare pictures, they're sitting on the reef where they should be, and they're doing their thing that they should be doing, right? But this particular one, uh, I think, you know, shows a real grace to this thing that most divers swim right past those things. Another sea hare, you know, another ugly, big, slug sea hare. <laughs> but I think that's a, you know, it's a different perspective, and I think the more you can see anything, life, whatever, in, diff in a different perspective, the better, uh, the more you can understand it, for sure. Yeah, so. it, it really does express my, my reverence and my respect for all of this life. It's all sacred as far as I'm concerned. And I think if I can just continue to hold that feeling and hold myself to that, then, you know, think everything else will work out. Because I really do, I, I love these animals. So, I want to ask just one thing, if I could. In my book, I have a poem that I wrote. And I would love for all of you to close your eyes and just sort of go into your minds and come up with whatever comes up. I am a drop of water embraced by the sea, flowing effortlessly, weightless, without bounds, being without separation. Life in liquid motion surrounds me. I lie on the bottom and watch as my breath rises to the surface and is set free. Yeah. Richard always jokes that I find all this stuff and he never does, but I always say he's got an eye that no one else does and he can somehow capture the, the soul of the shot in a way that no one else can. Oh, his, his work is just unbelievably beautiful. I just, he made, again, as Sharon said, 
he made the creatures come alive, and I will look at them all so differently. I can't wait to see the book. I, I just think that there is something about his feeling that is obvious in everything he's doing, and the colors. Just, I just can't believe. I can't believe that out there in our channel, there are colors like that. Yeah. Oh, I like the sea lions just because they're so cute, and I like, I like all the little. Like certain organi uh, or organisms that he gets pictures of, because you really see their personalities. And like he was saying, and that's that's my favorite aspect of his photography is seeing the seeing all their little quirks and their personalities, and like Hindebrink's eyes and stuff is really special. Well, what I found to be really fascinating about Richard's presentation today here at the Wildling was the way it came full circle. At the beginning, he talked about um, being a child and his experiences with the tide pools and getting up close to the tide pools and actually seeing the animals and touching the animals. And then at the end, again, he talked about his relationship with the animals as a photographer. They're not just pictures that he takes, but he feels an actual connection and relationship. And it was. Um, that full circle coming all the way back to the feelings that he had as a child that really fascinated me.